Introduction to Deploying, Securing, and Scaling Redis on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Redis Remote Dictionary Server is a popular open source in memory data store that supports a wide array of data structures in addition to simple key value pairs. Redis is a key value database where values can contain more complex data types, such as strings, hashes, lists, sets, sorted sets, bitmaps, and hyperlog logs, with atomic operations defined on those data types. Redis combines in memory caching with built in replication persistence, sharding, and the master-slave architecture of a traditional database. Few important Redis features are listed below. Single Instance Architecture It runs as a single-threaded application called Redis Server, which is responsible for storing data in memory. Persistence Redis can maintain the data persistent by using a Redis database file, RDB, or an append-only file, AOF. Backup and Recovery To store the data, you can use RDB snapshots or AOF logs and store them in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Object Storage, which provides durable storage. Partial High Availability Redis supports replication, both for high availability and to separate read workloads from write workloads. Maximum High Availability Redis achieves clustering by partitioning and replication of data. Partitioning involves sharding your data into multiple Redis instances so that every instance contains only a subset of the keys. Here are the steps to install and secure a single Redis instance on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Step 1. First, start by creating VCN and subnets. Step 2. Once VCN and subnets are created, then install Redis. Step 3. Finally, you can secure the Redis instance. Here is a quick demo of the steps involved. Log in to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Portal. Create a VCN with two subnets to house a Bastion server and Redis server. Ensure that the VCN CIDR is big enough to accommodate more subnets. So even if you plan to expand your deployment in the future by introducing Redis clustering and adding application servers or database servers. Build the Bastion server in a public subnet and the Redis server in a private subnet. For the purpose of this demo, we have created both subnets as public subnets. However, in production, it is a good practice to run Redis in a private subnet. Cache subnet 10.0.1.0.24 The subnet where cache instances reside. Bastion subnet 10.0.0.24 A public subnet that can be used as a jump box to access the instances in the private subnets. Then attach the following security lists to each subnet to restrict the access further. For Bastion subnet, allow ingress access on TCP port 22. From the public internet, to allow SSH access to the Bastion host. And then allow egress of all protocols. Redis server by default listens on TCP port 6379. So, for Redis server, Allow ingress access on TCP port 6379 for accessing the Redis instance from the Bastion server only. And also, allow ingress access on TCP port 22 for SSH access from the Bastion subnet private IP address range. For the purpose of this demo, we are adding security lists to allow access from Internet 0000 -0000 but the best practice is to allow inbound access only from the Bastion IP subnet range. Then, allow egress access to all protocols. Here you can see the master and slave instances ready for the Redis installation. Install Redis using the following command.
Then start the Redis service with this command. If you want Redis to start on boot, you can enable it with the Enable command. You can check the status of Redis with this command. And you will be able to view a similar screen as highlighted here. Then, test the setup with the following command. If Pong is the response, it means that Redis is running on your server. To secure the Redis instance, enter this command. With this, you will be able to locate the private IP address of your instance. To update it in the configuration file, use the command. Now, update the config file with the previously captured IP address. Restart the Redis process after making the config change. We will now update the firewall rules by running the following commands. We must update firewall rules on the instance to allow inbound access to the Redis server. Allow access only to your Redis server from your hosts by using their private IP addresses in order to limit the number of hosts your service is exposed to. Here we are opening up firewall ports TCP6379 for the specific Redis server private IP. These steps ensure security at the instance level. You can further secure the Redis instance by adding password and authentication. To generate password, use the following command. Note that entering this command as written generates the same password every time. To create a password different from the one that this command would generate, change the word in quotation marks to any other word or phrase. Although the generated password is not pronounceable, it is a very strong and very long one, which is exactly the type of password required for Redis. Now, copy the password to replace the default password. Next, access the configuration file with this command. Then, scroll to the security section and look for a commented directive that reads as Require Pass Fubard. Now, paste the copied password replacing the word Fubard. Finally, restart Redis with the command. As traffic volume increases, the pressure on a single instance increases. Scaling Redis reduces the pressure on a single instance and increases availability. When you perform replication to scale Redis Master, three slave instances are created. These are spread across two availability domains. Spreading the nodes across two availability domains also provides high availability if an entire availability domain fails. One of the nodes is the primary or the master node, and the other three are the read replicas or slaves. By configuring the architecture this way, you are splitting your database read traffic to the read replicas, while the master node handles all the write traffic. Scaling Redis by using replication. Here are the steps to scale a Redis instance on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Step 1. Start by creating VCN and subnets. Step 2. Install Redis. Step 3. Configure replication on the master node. Step 4. Configure replication on the slave nodes. Here is a quick demo of the steps involved. Here you can see the Redis server is configured and the service is running. We can now proceed with replication on the master node. Configuring a Redis primary node or master is not very different from configuring a standalone Redis instance. There are a few things worth noting. 1. Secure the master by using a strong password, as discussed earlier. 2. Specify your cache eviction policies, or just use the defaults. 3. 
specify a sensible value for the TCP Keep Alive timeout value. This ensures that the master node is connected with its clients on a periodic basis. 4. Bind the server to the private IP address of the instance. 5. Redis provides backup of the data by persisting it to disk. You can specify the backup type that you need and the file used to backup this data. Be sure to restart the Redis server after making changes to the config file. Connect to the server using this syntax. Now, test the newly created master by running the following commands. The output should indicate that no slave nodes are connected to it. To configure replication on the slave nodes, you need to make a few changes on the slave instances to allow communication with the master. 1. Bind the server to the private IP address of the instance. 2. Secure your slave instance by using a strong password. 3. Uncomment the following line in the configuration file and indicate the IP address where the master server can be reached, followed by the port set on that machine. By default, the port is 6379. 4. Uncomment the master offline and provide the password, passphrase, that you set up earlier on the master server. First, bind the server to the private IP address of the instance. Now, secure your slave instance by using a strong password. Uncomment the line in the configuration file and indicate the IP address where the master server can be reached, followed by the port set on that machine. By default, the port is 6379. Uncomment the master offline and provide the password passphrase that you set up earlier on the master server. Restart the service like you did in the master server to reinitialize Redis and load the modified config file. Verify this configuration with the Redis info command which reports information about replication. If you happen to look at the same information on the Redis master server, you would see information about replication. As you can see, the master and slave servers correctly identify one another in their defined relationship. You can follow the same approach in setting up the second slave in the second availability domain. The process should look exactly the same. Please go to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Portal to learn more. Be sure to sign up for the free trial and get started right away.